This video is brought to you by Mint Mobile. This is Samsung's Galaxy S23 Ultra versus Samsung's Galaxy S24 Ultra. And it's pretty clear and obvious that if you already have the S23 Ultra, there's no need to upgrade to the S24. But this video is for those who may have an older device and want to know, should I purchase last year's device or the new device? Let's go ahead and talk about it. So obviously the design, the build, all that stuff looks very, very similar from afar, but there are some small subtle differences here and there, but the main core design, still the same. Got a square boxy device, pointy corners. You got the camera design that's exactly the same, although the camera lenses do stick out just a little bit more. And both colorways that I have here are in the sky blue. So it really does emphasize how similar they look. I found that the S24 Ultra is a little bit more matte all around. So the back glass itself also does look a little bit more matte to me. There's less shine to it versus the S23 Ultra it does have a bit of a glimmer and a bit of a shine a bit to it. And obviously the aluminum frame is a glossy finish versus the S24 Ultra's titanium frame is a brushed matte finish. And it actually does make a difference because the S24 Ultra does feel a lot grippier if you're not using a case compared to the S23 Ultra. The S24 Ultra also does have a now flat display, both obviously on the front, but also on the back. So everything seems to be a little bit flatter. Um, so it makes the frame just a little bit bigger or feel a little bit thicker. And it just, again, feels a lot grippier. And the S24 Ultra is just a millimeter wider and also a millimeter shorter compared to the S23 Ultra. And I believe that has to do with the fact that the display is, is no longer a curved display, but also the uniform bezel on the S24 Ultra allowed them to make the phone just a little bit shorter while still maintaining the exact same display size. And speaking of the display, both of them are that 6.8 inch, 120 hertz, 1440p dynamic AMOLED display. So of course it does sound very similar, but there are a couple of differences when it comes to each display. First one of course is obviously, like I already mentioned, the flat display versus the edge curve display. It's really up to you to decide if you are bothered by edge curve displays or not. Sometimes they do get annoying because they do cause an accidental touch here and there. Mostly only happens for me whenever I'm using the phone without a case and I'm stretching across to try and reach something up at the top of the display and I'm only using one hand. It also helps with installing screen protectors. A flatter display is much easier to install a screen protector, but also cheaper as well since some of the glass ones are a little bit tedious to install and, and may actually be a little bit more expensive. I personally have installed a screen protector on the S24 Ultra and I never did install a screen protector on the S23 Ultra because again, it's much tougher to install. So I do have a few minor scratches on the S23 Ultra, which is using Corner Gorilla Glass Victus 2 versus the S24 Ultra. It's using the new Corner Gorilla Glass Armor and I do, like I said, have a screen protector on, so it should help protect the phone from those small minor scratches. Apart from now having a uniform size bezel, they also decrease the size of the camera cutout, which is always nice to see. The S24 Ultra does have a more brighter display now. This only does come into play when you're in an outdoor situation. I found that if you try to set the brightness to a manual high brightness mode, whether it be with adaptive brightness turned on or off, I found that both of them got pretty much at the exact same brightness level. If not, sometimes the S23 Ultra does seem to be a bit brighter. So it seems that the S23 Ultra does have the capabilities of being set to a manually higher brightness versus the S24 Ultra even though it does have the ability to get brighter. The S24 Ultra also does have a slightly different look in the colors. You'll notice that the S24 Ultra does seem to have a more dull looking display, not terribly. I know a lot of people seem to be, in my opinion, putting it out of proportion. I think it's a little being too over dramatic about it. Yes, there definitely is a difference between the S23 Ultra and the S24 Ultra. But me personally, I personally have always liked the more natural display. I used to love a vivid display, but lately I've always been sticking to a more natural display. So I kind of appreciate the colors are being dialed back a bit, not being super vivid and punchy, even though some people may like that. If you do, then the S13 Ultra has still got that more vivid display. Even when you switch to vivid mode on the S24 Ultra, you barely notice a difference. There is a difference, but just very, very slightly. This all could be fixed in an update later down the road, but personally, I haven't seen an update yet. So as of now, colors don't seem to be as saturated and as vivid compared to the S23 Ultra. Another thing I do want to mention is that I didn't even know this was an issue until I browsed Reddit, but apparently there is an issue with graininess in the display. You only notice this if you're in a gray background with your brightness set to a certain level. I personally never noticed it until I tested it and I did notice the graininess on my display. 
for the S23 Ultra, it didn't have that graininess. So there could be a defect in the hardware. Some people say it might be a software thing. I'm not sure, but it's, it is something to take note of because you are spending a lot of money on this device. So for there to be some kind of quality control issue there, that's a concern for sure. So I would probably wait to see if there's any involvement in the fact that maybe this could be something that it's fixed through a software update, or maybe this is like a first batch type of issue and we might have to send these back. I'm not sure what's gonna happen with it or if it's even a serious issue for you guys. Like I said, I didn't even notice it or even know about it until I checked Reddit and saw those posts. So I personally would have been okay not even realizing that and probably wouldn't have ever noticed that in my day to day. But that's definitely something that that's my eyes. If you have a more trained eye for this kind of stuff, then you probably would have noticed it. Another thing that's new is there's a new adaptive color tone feature. Basically, this changes the color, temperature, and the white balance of the display to match the ambient lighting of your environment. So if you're in a cooler environment, so the, the white balance is more cool, then the display itself will be more cool. Same thing if it's in a warmer environment, it'll be a little bit warmer. And lastly, there is a new anti-reflective coating on the display. I did install a screen editor, which is also an anti-reflective screen protector, which personally, I don't know if it's making it worse or counteracting with it, but either way, it definitely is a bit less reflective compared to the S13 Ultra, which is a nice bonus in my opinion, that you don't actually get as much reflection. I did notice though it's a more of a red tint on the S24 Ultra compared to the S23. Again, that might be because of the screen protector though. As far as connectivity, both of them have the latest Bluetooth and the latest 5G connections, but there is an improvement and change in the Wi-Fi. You don't have access to the latest Wi-Fi. I think that's Wi-Fi 7 versus Wi-Fi 6E on the S23 Ultra. I don't even use Wi-Fi 6E yet. I think I'm on a Wi-Fi 5 router still, if that is even a thing. I don't even know. I just know I don't have Wi-Fi 6 yet, so... I don't even care about the latest Wi-Fi, to be honest with you. But otherwise, my latest connections, mobile data service has been just fine on the S24 Ultra. It was perfectly fine on the S23 Ultra as well. Didn't see any issues or encounter anything like that. And that's also thanks to today's video partner, Mint Mobile. Have you ever thought to yourself, why the f is my phone bill so damn high? Having to pay so much for a phone on top of a phone bill is insane. Well, Mint Mobile offers premium wireless for as low as $15 a month. And you don't have to sacrifice speed, coverage or data because they're built on the largest 5G network. And Mint Mobile is able to keep those prices so low because they don't actually have any physical locations or stores. Everything is done online. It really is super simple to switch. You simply select which plan that you want and then select an eSIM versus a physical SIM card. So if your phone is eSIM compatible, you can easily get yourself started right away within minutes. Or if you do want a physical SIM card shipped out to you, which I personally like to do myself, you can still get one of those shipped out to you for free. I personally have been a Mint Mobile customer for the last three years. I've had nothing but a good experience. I've been able to do my day-to-day -day stuff from just browsing music, browsing social media, playing games, and just doing my everyday texting and calling. So don't let the big carriers take advantage of you anymore. Go ahead and scan the QR code on my screen to get yourself started or use the link down in the description. Try mintmobile.com forward slash taco tech. It does help out when you use the link. So thank you. And let me know if you made the switch. And moving on to the rest of the hardware, just to top it off. Buttons and ports, exact same spots, USB-C at the bottom, dual fire and speakers, power button and volume rocker at the exact same side. And as far as the speaker quality, I found that the speaker quality was pretty good on the S23 Ultra already. The S24 Ultra, my ears are not trained to know if it sounds better or not. To me, it sounds good as well. I don't think it's much of an improvement. They did change the way that the actual speaker is built, but uh, even then I found that it sounded pretty good on both of them. And both of them have the S Pen, albeit that the way they come out of the, the phone itself is a little bit different. It's very subtle and you really won't make a difference. But the S23 Ultra does have a more rounded look and finish to it and versus the S24 Ultra has a more aggressive, like, cut off type of look. It's not as rounded feeling. So it looks like it pops out a little bit more. And if actually you were to put the S24 Ultra pen into the S23 Ultra, it would actually be completely flush. But either way, you have the exact same features with them when it comes to the Bluetooth connectivity, whether it be with air gestures and taking notes. And because the S24 Ultra is, of course, a flat display, it should be easier to take notes and don't have to worry about the S Pen accidentally falling off or sliding off those edges. You don't have to worry, though, about the accidental swipe of the back gesture because that happens to me every now and then. But personally, I use the S Pens for very minor things. So me specifically, I tend to like to create little screenshots with the S Pen and also like that you can pin that little screenshot so it comes useful whenever you get like a code from your email a code from the message or something like that and you just want to copy it you just pin it up in the corner or go to whatever app is requesting that pin and then you type it in i think it's very convenient same thing with like little ads 
or not little ads, but the X's within ads, sometimes they make them so small that you, your fat finger, if you try to click it, might accidentally cause the ad to be clicked instead. And so then you get sent to the Play Store and it becomes annoying. So being able to be precise with the S Pen is pretty convenient. But nevertheless, you get the S Pen on both of them. And both phones are water resistant at an IP68 water and dust resistant rating. And both phones have the exact same biometrics with an under display ultrasonic fingerprint sensor, as well as a facial recognition to the scanner with the camera. Both work honestly exactly the same, didn't have any issues with the S23 Ultra and don't have any issues at all with the S24 Ultra as well. Same things happen though, where if you're too far away from the phone or if at a weird angle or if there's not enough light, sometimes the phone won't recognize you and won't unlock you with facial recognition. And the haptics are okay. I think on the S23 Ultra, I said they were meh on my S23 Ultra review. And I still feel like they're meh, but on this one for Ultra, when I used them the first day, I thought, you know, this isn't too bad. This actually feels pretty nice. And I thought it did feel pretty nice. And then I tried the S13 Ultra again and realized it felt pretty much exactly the same. So uh, I would say, I don't know when it comes to haptics, I can't be decided, I guess. I guess it was just maybe a placebo as well because it was a brand new phone. So haptics are okay on both of them. As far as performance, this will be super short and sweet because performance is really good on both of them. Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 with 12 gigabytes of LPDDR5X RAM and then 256 up to a terabyte of UFS 4.0 storage on the S23 Ultra versus Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 with 12 gigabytes of LPDDR5X RAM with 256 up to a terabyte of storage UFS 4.0. Again, really good specs on both of them. Last year's chipset isn't going to slow down at all compared to the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. Very good performance on both of them. Even the efficiency is pretty good on both of them. I found that the S23 Ultra and the S24 Ultra felt exactly the same after a long day of usage, as well as performance whenever you're trying to play games and stuff, have heavy intensive tasks, both felt the same. They got warm after some time, but never to the point that I felt really hot or it caused the phone to freeze up, lag or slow down. So. I personally think performance is really good. The efficiency seems to be really good as well. Heat management also seems to be really good as well. So I find that whichever one you have or whichever one you pick, you'll be more than satisfied with the performance when it comes to gaming or just everyday usage. But when it comes to the software, I do want to hit on those AI features because that's the main difference when it comes to the S24 to the S23. Again, there are supposed to be some of those AI features arriving to the S23 Ultra. Which ones? I actually do not know. There could be an answer already out there, but I didn't take the time to look it up. But either way, some of those may be coming to the S23 Ultra. Again, will, do you need them right now? This instant, do you want the latest software release and you can't wait an extra week or two or maybe even a month at most to get the latest features? Then maybe there's a reason to buy the S24 Ultra. But some of those features, I don't even use. They're cool. Don't get me wrong. I just don't use them in my day to day or will probably ever use them ever. And going through them one by one, what you're currently missing out on with the S24 Ultra versus the S23 is the first one, the foam feature, which allows you to do live translations in real time while you're talking to someone. Never have used this, haven't even tried to test it at all because I speak to everyone either in English or in Spanish as necessary. This could be useful for someone who has lots of international friends, but I barely have any real friends, so it doesn't even matter to me. What I do wish though, is that Samsung would have brought over or introduced some kind of screen calling feature. They do have their Bixby text to call, which basically you type out what you want Bixby to type or say for you. And then Bixby will listen in and then it will take that voice and turn it into text so that you just have to read what the other person's saying on the line. It's similar, it's close, but what I want is something like Google has where it can screen call in the background where basically it won't even ring the phone if it's some kind of spam caller, then it'll just have big speed or you can have the Google Assistant answer the phone call for you, run through the same messages and, and if it's actually something important or someone who actually wants to talk to you, then it'll eventually ring your phone. That'd be cool but it's not available. I wish that's something that they would introduce. And I was, I thought they would introduce it or maybe enhance the Bixby text and call into this feature, but unfortunately they did not. Then there's the Samsung keyboard, which has built-in AI features now, which has the ability to change the tone, change your writing style, change the grammar and spelling, which is already done to just more improved, I guess. Uh, and also translation. Personally, again, when it comes to this stuff, I don't use it and don't really care for it. I've already been a Google keyboard user for pretty much my whole Android existence. I do not like the Samsung keyboard. I tried it out. I was trying to use it and I just couldn't stand it. It, it just the auto correction. I think it might just have to take time to learn how I write, 
but it just kept correcting stuff to words that I would never use or didn't even fit into the context of the sentence I was writing. So I don't know, it was annoying and I just switched back to the Google keyboard because it already understood how I write or it was better at knowing what I was trying to write. So yeah, I don't like it. I left Samsung keyboard alone and just went back to Google keyboard. So I'm not going to be able to access those AI features. Next up, there's interpreter mode, which is kind of like the phone call uh, translation thing where you're able to just use a app to be able to translate someone with real time. So you can communicate with someone else in a different language. Again, I haven't had to use it. Haven't even had a chance to test it. Actually, I did test it, but I didn't think it was going to be something I use in my day to day. And it still hasn't come up over a week since I've used the phone. So yeah, I think it's cool if you travel a lot, if you're an international traveler, cool, but not me. So <laughs> I won't be using it. And there's the voice recorder app that will have some AI features that can summarize and format your notes that you get from a voice recording. Again, I don't use the voice recorder app, so I will not be using it. I might use it potentially for like, maybe I can use it for scripting videos and it can give me a summarization of my chit chat of me just talking to myself of what I wanna talk about in my next video. So I could use it for brainstorming potentially. So it's got use cases, I just haven't used it yet myself. And here's the one I have used, the Samsung internet summarization feature. Again, this is something that you have to make sure you're using Samsung internet. It's not available on Chrome or Firefox or anything else. I mean, they might have their own thing, but on the Samsung phone and you want that AI feature, it's gotta be done on the Samsung internet, which is fine because I actually do use Samsung internet, surprisingly. So it's able to summarize the text of an article. So if it can read the article for you and then just give you either a detailed or a quick short summary of the most important details of that article. Kind of sucks because I guess some reporter or whatever probably took the time to actually write that out or maybe you just use ChatGPT or something. So either way, um, being able to summarize the quick notes or the details of a web page is super nice when you're in a rush and just want to get some important information. You can also translate a lot of translation features with the AI stuff, but again, I won't use that, but the summarization is really cool. That's one feature that I wish was on this device from the Pixel A Pro because I actually did use that a lot on the Chrome. There's the wallpaper AI, which basically allows you to create custom wallpapers. Are they really custom? Because they're they're made from predetermined prompts and you can just change the keywords of those prompts. Uh, I, I guess it is, I don't know, but I don't like them. I, I'm not a fan of how they turn out personally. And I think it's really limited to what you can do, so I don't use them. But if you wanna mess around with it and see if you can potentially make yourself a cool custom uh, wallpaper, try it. But me personally, I won't be using them. I personally get my wallpapers from backdrops, so, that's the app that I personally use. And then there's the new circle to search, which I don't know if it's AI specific, but it's, it's available with the Pixel 8 Pro now as well. Basically, I like it because not only does it allow you to quickly search stuff on your screen, you can use your camera and then search for stuff in real life, but also it just gives you a quick search bar anywhere at any point. So you can be in the middle of an application, in the middle of a game or something else, and just hold down your home bar and it brings up a quick search bar. I think that's super cool and super convenient, but I'm sure that's something that might end up coming to the S23 Ultra. And of course, lastly, there's the photo editing capabilities with the generative fill AI stuff. So you can go into the Samsung's photo editor or just Samsung's gallery, select the photo and then go to the AI editor. You can diagonally shift and rotate the photo and fill in the gaps, the missing pieces on the edges and or move and select a subject, specifically with an S Pen, it's pretty nice. You can select a specific little section and generally move that, or not generally, just move that object, resize it, rotate it, whatever, and then it'll just fill in that empty space using generative AI, which is, it's pretty cool. It can, it can look pretty nasty sometimes and unrealistic and fake, but the fact that it's pretty intelligent to make it look like it's trying to make sense out of the environment, out of the image and try to replicate what it would actually be there. It's it's doing a good, a decent job. It's cool to mess with, it's fun to play with, but again, not something that I feel like I would use on a consistent day-to-day -day basis to actually use it for something productive or something meaningful. And lastly, we do have to mention it. Everyone's been mentioning it. At least it's a good thing that's being mentioned and we don't really have an answer quite yet is why are things gonna be going behind a subscription? It doesn't make sense. If they do, honestly, there's no way in hell I'm paying for this stuff because the only one I actually use is the Samsung internet summarization feature. And if that's the case, I'm just gonna switch to my Pixel 8 Pro if they start charging for this stuff because it's free as of now that I know of with the Pixel. So that's that's terrible if they go into subscription fee. 
a big company, Samsung, and you're charging $1,300 for this phone. Like, come on, you already took enough money from us. Why would we have to pay you a subscription for your AI service, which aren't even that crazy good? They're all tied down to specific Samsung apps. If you made it widely open, that'd be something else, but it's not. But as far as software support on the plus side, the S24 Ultra is going to be offered seven years of major OS updates. That's really good versus the S23 Ultra was originally only promised four years of major OS updates and five years of security updates. And now it's a year old. So three years of major OS updates and then four years of security updates. So it's still got you know a couple handful of years still to still live. And even if you keep it after that, I'm sure you'll be fine with it. But if you want longevity and I'm talking like long, long time, then the S24 Ultra is definitely something to consider. But if you're someone who upgrades yearly, then obviously it doesn't even matter. As far as the cameras, both of them do have pretty much very similar hardware systems. Uh, they have the exact same ultra wide, which is a 12 megapixel f2.2 aperture, a main wide lens, which is a 200 megapixel f1.7 aperture, followed by a 10 megapixel telephoto with a f2.4 aperture. And then the difference is going to be the periscope telephoto where the Samsung has a 10 megapixel f4.9 aperture lens versus the S24 Ultra that has a 50 megapixel f3.4 aperture lens. And then on the front, both of them have a 12 megapixel f2.2 aperture. So what does that all mean? Basically, very similar, but yet very good camera systems on both of them. Whichever one you have or choose to get, you'll be more than satisfied with the quality and detail of the photos. There is a difference in just the detail once you start to zoom in and get into that difference in the periscope telephoto. But before you get to that, I think the ultra wide, the, the main wides and the front cameras all look pretty good when it comes to photos. I did notice though a small difference as far as like the colors and how it processes photos on both of them. Uh, just very slight. I, it could be my untrained eye, but it looked to me like the S23 Ultra does seem to make photos just a little bit lighter and brighter and in turn it makes it look a little bit more vivid. Versus the S24 Ultra, shadows and darker areas tend to stay a bit darker. So kind of depends on what you prefer and what you like, but I think both of them, in my opinion, looks pretty good. And of course, once you switch to the periscopic telephoto with 5X, you'll notice that the 5X on the S24 definitely looks a lot more detailed and sharper compared to the 5X, which is just cropping in or digitally zooming in on a 3X of the S23 Ultra. And then when you finally get to 10X, of course, I think both of them look pretty good. The S23 Ultra obviously is using an optical zoom versus the S24 Ultra is using an optical quality type of zoom. So it's still, you know, cropping in on that 50 megapixel sensor, but it's still able to get a really good shot in my opinion. And you can almost argue that with the AI, whatever it's doing and the processing, and then with the higher megapixel count and the wider aperture as well to allow more light in, it overall does seem to get a pretty good shot. Same thing as you're going in 30X and 100X, I mean, 100X looks pretty bad on both of them, but 30X, I think, looks pretty decent on the S24 Ultra. A little bit more detail compared to the 30X of the S23 Ultra, which seems to make things a little bit more watercolor-like, which tends to make things look a little bit more smeared with little to no detail. What I did notice, though, in darker situations and low-light situations, sometimes the S23 Ultra will stick to that 3X telephoto, so even though you're zooming in the 10X, it's still gonna be using that 3X just digitally zoom. So it will look very grainy and low detail, but sometimes the photo came out looking a lot brighter because that 3X telephoto does have a bigger aperture versus the 5X of the S24 Ultra. So you'll notice sometimes it'll just go back and forth trading blows between which one it's deciding to use based on the lighting environment. But if in daytime lighting, I think the S24 Ultra takes the win. So this is the S23 Ultra versus the S24 Ultra. Right now we're kind of in an echoey area, but under some shade, this is the ultra wide on both Samsung devices. And you can get pretty close to subjects with both ultra wides, allowing you to get almost like a macro shot. So they do have autofocus available for each ultra wide. You can see the same amount of view as far as how wide allows you to go 0.6x on both of them so they haven't changed that up now switching over to the main lenses this would be the main wide lens again taking a look at the stabilization as well as the detail and you'll as you'll see the audio difference between them the microphones now, take note that I am using a case 
on both of them and uh, I may be covering up a mic here or there with my hand as well. So now as we switch to the 3X lens, I believe the 3X is the exact same on both of them, meaning the same actual hardware, if I'm not mistaken. And you can see what kind of quality you're getting. From what I'm seeing on the displays, they look very, very, very similar. Hard to distinguish between them. Granted, I am using a more natural tone display on both of them, so colors don't look to be as vibrant and as saturated. Now, switching over to 5X, the S24 Ultra does have an optical 5X, and we did have to zoom in with digital zoom on the S23 Ultra. So this is still using the 3X just cropped in, digitally zoomed. You can definitely see a difference there as far as the quality and detail, a lot more detail on the S24 Ultra, I almost said S23. Yeah, definitely looks a lot better there. So it's definitely up for debate whether or not you think upgrading to, to a 5X or downgrading, however you want to say it, uh, to a 5X main optical telephoto periscopic zoom is worth it or not, but you can definitely see the detail difference there. Now, as I zoom in the 10X, the S23 Ultra has an optical lens here, and the S24 Ultra is now digitally cropping in with the 5X telephoto. Now, the 5X telephoto is a higher megapixel count, so it should pretty much be cropping into the exact same 12 megapixel size of the S23 Ultra. Again, I think they both... I mean, I would say the S24 Ultra is doing a little bit more processing to be able to get more detail. Because if you look at the branches on the tree, the detail in the playground there, the, the soccer net, you can definitely, it looks like, see more detail and make out more of what it is compared on the, to the S23 Ultra. So this is the front-facing camera on both of the devices, the S24 Ultra versus the S23 Ultra. First thing I'll say is they both look very sharp. The detail is insane how good they are. You can see the little rain as it just flies past me or on my face. I gotta say, it looks pretty damn good. The bokeh, the natural bokeh. Like this isn't even using any kind of like, uh, uh, what's it called? Cinematic mode or, or blur mode. Like it's all natural here on the front facing. And as far as like the colors, I feel like I am seeing the S24 Ultra look a little bit more vivid. A little bit more colorful. My lips in particular look a little bit more redder on the S24 Ultra. Could be just a display, but I don't think so. So yeah, what do you guys think of the S24 Ultra versus the S23 Ultra? Again, this is 4K and this audio is also coming directly from the phones. In low light though, it did struggle on both of them. I think that if you have a steady hand or using a tripod potentially, it may look a little bit better, but I was doing it outdoors and it was cold. So my hands were starting to shake a bit in some of those shots. So you may notice a lot of lack of detail in a lot of these photos. And it is again because it's using nighttime mode. So it does have to make you hold your phone for like three or so seconds. And if you move at all, it's gonna cause it to just get blurry and stuff. But overall, as far as cameras, both of them are pretty good. You're gonna be satisfied whichever one you have or get. Unless you want the latest and greatest and the newest features and the newest periscope telephoto, then the S24 Ultra might be something to consider, but I think you'll be more than satisfied with the camera system on the S23 Ultra. And lastly, as far as battery life, it's still a little too early to tell how well the S24 Ultra is gonna hold up. But the S23 Ultra, even after a year, still doing really well. I usually get 14 to sometimes 20 or 24 at most hours of total usage with somewhere around three to five hours or so of screen on time, depending on my day. And on S24 Ultra, I know it's early to tell, like I said, but I'm actually pretty happy with what I'm seeing so far. So on the first day, I was killing it in like, I think I killed it in 10 or so hours after charging it for the full charge. But then the next day, I was able to get, I think, roughly 20 or so hours. And then from there, I'm getting every day a nice solid usage out of it. So it's lasting me all day from the moment I wake up to the end of the night. Sometimes I'm getting anywhere from a minimum of 14 hours or so to at most like 20, sometimes even a day on some days. So 
battery life is looking pretty good on the S24 Ultra. So I would say you won't have to worry about battery life much on either of them. And I do like that they have added a new couple of settings that may again come down to the S23 Ultra with the battery protection. There's one called Adaptive, which learns how you use your phone. And if you're charging overnight, it'll trickle charge through the night and then it'll stop charging at 80%, I think, or something. And then once it knows that you're getting ready to get up, it'll fully charge the device so that it's not fully charging all night. So that's pretty cool and pretty convenient and should help with battery life longevity. As far as charging, both of them have the exact same 45 watts capable of wired charging. Should take about an hour and 10 minutes. And wireless charging, 15 watts on both of them of a max and reverse wireless charging as well. I do wish that they incorporated a new QI2, I think, standards onto the S24 Ultra, which is like using the new MagSafe standard type of thing where it has magnets and stuff. But I think it complicates things with the S Pen. So maybe with the next generation, or maybe we'll see that with the Z Fold uh, 6, which would be pretty cool. Um, but either way, you could also get cases to have it with it too. But again, keep that in mind that it may complicate things with the S Pen. I don't know how much, but uh, it's a possibility. So in conclusion, which one should you go out and get? Obviously, like I said, if you already have the S23 Ultra, just keep it. No need to upgrade this year. Wait another year, please, to then see a bigger upgrade, a potentially bigger upgrade. Who knows if there even will be a bigger upgrade? Just wait it out still. I think you still have a great, fantastic device going into 2024 and even probably into 2025. But if you're upgrading from an older phone, which one should you go out and buy? If you're paying like a difference of $300 or less, get the S24 Ultra, get the latest and greatest. But if you're paying more than that, and I would go for the S23 Ultra, say like $900, $800 used or new, you might be able to find this at a pretty good deal or price. But otherwise paying $1,000 or more for the S23 Ultra, you might as well just try and get the S24 Ultra. So that's the way I'm seeing it. Hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully you guys enjoyed and peace.